Um, what do you got? What did you find interesting? Okay, the last thing that they talked about? Yeah, that was something I haven't uh, uh, heard discussed. Yeah, that pipeline's been in the news. Yeah. More than just that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That opened my eyes to it too. I, I was my line of thinking was the same as yours is that we typically tend to be a little protectionist in our thinking about energy. That you know, energy independence and you know whatever. And to start thinking about it regionally, especially with energy, seems to make sense. If if the wind blows strong in Kansas and we can harvest maybe some power there, but the sun burns brightly in Mexico. You know, there can be a diversified energy platform that, that could be beneficial for both countries and kind of take the approach of not having to figure it out yourself, but to, to use NAFTA as a, as a way to, um, to integrate that. So yeah, that was a good one. What else? to the other side of the room here. Taylor, what did you, what were you, what did you like or questions that you had on your um, list? I thought that um, the guy commented that Mexico would want a free agreement between the countries to utilize their individual strengths so that they could have the free labor and capital. Okay, so well, especially the labor part, right? Yeah. And, and so I thought that was an interesting twist with this too that um, we, open up trade and we're the capital intensive country they're the labor intensive country our capital intensive production methods with agriculture march down to mexico and and the displacement of local farmers has been kind of an issue down there so you've got smaller farmers that have been not not too much different than what went on in the united states right where we've got large commercial farms and have displaced some <coughs> but Without, if we had free labor mobility, those things would tend to equalize. So why do we have, we kind of have one policy without the other, and their resource is the one that's kind of more stuck, right? Our capital is able to flow across the border back and forth, Which you would think but their labor's way. not. Which you need the other way around. Yeah, you really would. Yeah, and, and with, with capital, you kind of want to <coughs> get away from the thought of hauling a machine across the border, but rather we're just creating that machine or buying that land or whatever. So it's more of the, the capital in terms of the ability to form the capital with the business expertise that we have and the technology and the production process that we can kind of make that come alive in Mexico. Um, it's it's uh, different. So we have resource flow. We kind of have a resource flow and balance issue of not allowing uh, labor maybe to come the other direction. And so immigration's uh, right up there in the hit list, but what are we leaning towards uh, in the United States? What have you heard in the news as far as immigration? Are we leaning towards just dropping that wall, that great wall of uh, Mexico, <laughs> no, we're building a bigger wall, right? We're talking about making that sucker 20 foot high with razor wire at the top and build it all the way, you know. So we're, we're kind of going the opposite direction of, of what we'd expect uh, in, a, in a free,
trade type environment. Um, if we're trying to make neighbors, we're not we're not moving that direction very quickly. Max, is that because a lot of like people that are lobbying maybe are in it like uneducated about what the labor force what the labor force might come over and they're just afraid that the jobs are going to be. I think so. I think old biases. Yeah, you've got the old, you know, we, we've just, since the 1960s, started to break down our own racial barriers within our nation, and we're still not perfectly there yet. So then we just look for the next scapegoat. Well, we don't want those people over in our playground, right? And so then we start we were talking about that case, doing the same thing. The bill that's been passed through for the Supreme Court about the Kansas legislature to really go after self-justification. Mm -hmm. All right, what else on this thing? Let me go to the middle ground. Adam, you're in the middle today. So we got the three solos. I got a pattern that I see here. We had Ethan, Taylor, and now Adam in the middle. Security issues have been um, an important one. I guess that's part of the wall. <coughs> um, and you kind of wonder if Mexico wouldn't want to import some of our security to their country. But then you get into the, well, we can't handle our own affairs type of thing. And it's, you know, you have to be kind of humble to kind of ask for help. Well, we can fight our own wars down here. But they could probably import some some American assistance uh, maybe to help uh, some of the domestic issues they're having. Okay, anything else? Is that part where you're just talking about like how they got to do like multiple forms? To yeah. Stuff, and he's talking about like if they made it more universal thing. Right. So with the North American Free Trade Agreement, we've got <laughs> this thing where apparently it's a free thing, but it's not really... <coughs> as free as it maybe could be. And so yeah, I thought that was an interesting, easy one. His, I liked his analogy, this isn't even low hanging fruit, this is fruit laying on the ground, to just do little things like that to help uh, ease the, the flow across the border. And maybe there's some other ways, uh, that, that's what I wrote down too, the deepening trade relations, that there's more ways to keep uh, chipping away at it. I know I've enjoyed the tomato and avocado change. You guys probably don't shop as much for your groceries, maybe, but uh, you can get tomatoes. What's that? I don't like avocados. You don't like avocados? I'm not a huge fan of avocados, but my wife is, and I, I do like it with some of the, you know, dip, avocado dip, yeah. you know, that sort of thing, with, and with usually with tomatoes. And um, traditionally, those things would go sky high in the winter, price-wise. Um, and I've really noticed the difference the last couple of years that you can still pick up cheap <coughs> avocados and decent tomatoes um, that are coming in from Mexico because of the reduction of the trade. So, from a personal standpoint, that's one thing that I've, I've liked. Using your list, right? Yep, using the list. Of course. Yes, yes. The list actually changed a bit. Um, this way, you know, Ottawa made a comp list. Yeah, the comp list. And she uh, quit doing it as of right now, and some other people picked it up. So the list is still available on the same site, but it's, pretty crazy. it's not quite the quite the same as what it was. I really but. Think people have that too. Well, I did it one time, and I was not organized whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, they just have they people get they they got used to it. But we would um, we would start to once we Adam asked a few times of doing that, which we did when we first got involved in the two. Then we learned to separate in our cart like comp list stuff towards the front part of the cart, and then do all the comp list stuff at one time. Yeah. All right. So. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Let's see. 